Hello everyone, and welcome back to Steins Gate Linear Bounded Phenogram. I'm G, and we are on the Kyoma Worldline story thing, and uh, Mayuri has been abducted by an unknown figure that we are calling Ix, and we just did a thing. Oh yeah, we used the time link machine to go back in time to back when we knew that Mayuri was at the Future Kajit Laboratory. So, let us begin. The faded world distorts and deforms. A piercing pain explodes deep inside my ears and I grit my teeth. I lose balance and grasp onto a nearby roadside tree. I can feel people's suspicious eyes on me from all around. My dizziness eventually subsided and the world regained its color. I let go of the tree, shook my head, and looked around in a circle. This is in front of UDX. And right behind me. Yuma, what's wrong ya? A cat girl was standing there. Ferris, why are you here? What do you mean why? I've been here all along yet. I didn't quite understand the situation. I wasn't even sure why I was here in the first place. However, I certainly knew the, what had happened. Reading Steiner, the world line has changed. Right, my eerie. What happened to my eerie? I look to my left as I mutter. My eerie cell phone, which I held in my hand just a minute ago, had disappeared. Checking my pockets yielded only that flyer in my cell phone. I opened it up and called my eerie. It's my eerie. My eerie. My eerie. Oh, okay, and you're so loud. Are you mad at me? I'm not mad. Of course I wasn't mad. As I take a deep sigh of relief, I put my hand back on the nearby tree. Mary, where are you? Um, um, the lab. I went back. My cell phone battery died, so I couldn't contact you. Sorry. I don't really know what she's talking about. By the way, Christian is at the lab, too. She just got back. It's just getting more confusing. But, whatever. Mary's on the phone with me now. I know where she is. The lab. Mary is at the lab. That's enough for me. Mary, stay at the lab. Don't go anywhere, okay? Oh, um, okay. After I hung up, I give Ferris, who was standing there puzzled, a simple farewell, then rush to the lab. I arrive in front of the brown tube workshop. I fly up the stairs beside it and throw open the door. I step inside to see... Mayuri, with her hands covered in breadcrumbs. Oh, welcome back, Reno Cream! After she greeted me, Mayuri starts chewing on the breadcrumbs stuck to her fingertips. The cold lump that was in my chest melts away. As I let out a large breath, I wipe the sweat off my forehead with the back of my hand. Mayuri, there's a flaw in your rhetoric, and that greeting is simply tautology. What? Welcome back, Irene, equals welcome back plus Ocarine, yes? Thus, welcome back, Ocarine, Ocarine means welcome back, Ocarine times two, making it grammatically awkward. Uh -huh, I guess so. Well, that's kind of like making yan yan, so it ca sounds kind of cute. Mary gives me a carefree smile. Her logic is beyond me, but that's a good thing. These unpredictable interactions are the true essence of this lab and provide the serendipity necessary for gadget development. What's more, I was simply happy to regain our usual everyday life. So, why does your hand look like a huddy man? Oh, this? These are breadcrumbs. I can see that. I'm asking why. Um, I was helping Daru. My ears breadcrumb ridden fingertips point toward the kitchen. When I turn to look, I see a man resembling a barrel standing in front of the stove. It was Daru. With his back hunched, he looks even more like a barrel than usual. What are you doing, Daru? I was inspired by Mane Chan. Mane Chan? Mane chan is the cooking idol at my 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 SMH. Meaning? We're cooking. Cooking for the development summit. We went and bought snacks already, but that's hardly enough, is it? At this point in our game of conversation catch, we've thrown the ball back and forth three times, but I still haven't the foggiest idea what he's talking about. I ask a follow-up question. Why do you need to cook? Am I not allowed to cook? You can, but what about the pizza? I remember that in the other world line, Daru was supposed to have ordered three pizzas for delivery. 
I would think that these would more than suffice to feed the development summit. Then Mayuri answered. Mayuri spoke with her hands still up in the air, like a surgeon. It's our was closed today. Closed? Is today a holiday or something? No, they didn't plan or anything, but they had to close due to an incident, apparently. Mayuri nods, with his back still turned to me. I wonder... Oh, nope, that's wrong person. I wonder what happened. They ran out of pizza sauce or... This is impossible. Anyway, pizza rat was closed. When Maishi said, I want Kitchen Jiro's Minchikatsu instead, Dr. Kun said, then I'll make them. Maya-chan was actually making Minchikatsu on yesterday's show. I actually recorded it onto a hard disk, so I figured I could make it along with her as I rewatched it. And so Maishi decided to help out. I look at the TV to see a cute girl, supposedly Maya-chan, frozen in place with her index finger pointed up. They paused their recording. Daru returns to his position in front of the stove and checks the oil temperature inside of the tempera pot. Mayuri goes back to her spot, too. Standing next to Daru, she sprinkles breadcrumbs over meatballs mixed with flour and egg. Is it okay for me to leave them to their own devices? A moment of worry enters my mind. Where's Kurusu in all this? I peek into the development room and... She's there. Kurusu's sitting in front of the PC monitor, typing away at the keyboard. I sneak up behind her. Did you get first post, Miss Kurigohan and Kamehameha? Huh? How did you know? Kurusu, in a rush, shuts off the monitor and stands up with her arms spread open what's behind her. With my demon eye, seeing through such flimsy secrets is a piece of cake. <laughs> it's not like browsing ad channel. I'm just looking something up. Looking something up? The time link machine is already complete. What more do you need to look up? Ah! <sighs> Kurusu bites her lip, looking annoyed. Her eyes wandered as she looked for some way to change the subject. Anyway, good for you. What is? But my Eri. I'm clueless. She's not supposed to know anything about the ra ransom note or that my Eri had gone missing in another timeline. It's not just Kurusu. There's no way Daru and my Eri would know. I peek over at the kitchen. The two of them sang along joyfully as they flattened their meatballs. First you fry it, then you dry it, then you got to. Here comes the cabbage beam! Uh huh, maybe she was a cabbage beam. Huh? You don't know, Daru? Cabbage beam is. Peace had returned to our everyday life. But these peaceful days would crumble at the slightest divergence in the world line. I understood that all too well. But if something happens after this, there's no guarantee that it won't. To make sure we're prepared, I may need to explain things to Kurusu at least. With this on my mind, I turned back toward the development room, and spoke. Hey Christina, do you... have a moment? I lead Kurusu down the staircase and out to the front of the brown tube workshop. What's so important that you had to take me out here? Well, the truth is... I told Kurusu about my experience in previous world lines. There was no way to do so without mentioning that I had time leap, but for some reason Kurusu accepted that with a little hesitation. Today, in a different world line, the workshop next to us is supposed to close early, but in this one, they're still open. Inside, the lights shine bright and the 42-inch CRT in the back is turned on. The owner, Mr. Brown, is also present. He stands imposingly as he watches the news. I see. I understand. I hate to say this after such a thorough explanation, but this is actually the second time I've heard this. Second time? Yep, second time. Anyway, I understand the gist of the situation. I also understand what happened to you. But there's one thing I want to confirm. What happened to the D-mail, the ransom message that Ix sent? It should be gone. Mary hasn't been abducted in this timeline. Or so I think as I open my cell phone. As I thought, the ransom layer that Ix sent via D-mail had disappeared without a trace. Looks like it's gone. I suddenly realize Kurusu's standing next to me. She looks at my cell phone screen and sees something that catches her attention. Oh, that catches her attention? Hey, where are these three messages? They also look like a D-mail. It must be the D-mail I sent from Mayuri's phone in the previous word line. I open the messages to confirm. Kidnapping. Into stop. Keep my area. 
and it was just as we thought. Keep my area in to stop. Kidnapping. When my past self saw this email, I must have set us on a path to this world line. That's why my area is in the lab right now. That's why she's able to stand in the kitchen and sing a song about Minchikatsu. There are no problems. Absolutely none. Except for the one thing that bugged me. Odd. What is? These three messages are all received at 3.20pm today. I sent these messages around 6.20 in the previous world line. But I let Dara decide where in time we should send them to. He told me he was sure Mayuri was in the lab at 3.16, so that's why I wanted the emails to be sent. You're saying they ended up being sent to 3.20 instead? Yeah. So? What's odd about that? The phone wave name sort of change is supposedly only able to adjust its time in increments of one hour. How far a D-mail is sent back in time is based on the timer. One second on the timer corresponds to one hour of time. By the way, Assistant, how many hours back from 6.20 is 3.20? 3. Correct, which means Dara set the phone wave name sort of change timer to three seconds. However, based on our experiments thus far, we have determined that it is impossible to send D-mail one hour back. That is because if the timer on the phone wave name sort of change is set for only one second, it doesn't stay active long enough for the electric discharge to occur. So what if it's set for three seconds? Did the electric discharge occur during those three seconds? Furthermore, during that window of time, I would have needed to press send on my Yuri's phone. What do you think? Could I have possibly pressed send within three seconds of Dara activating the phone wave period for the change? The answer is no. It definitely took more than three seconds. But for some reason... Okay, 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 I get it, I get it. That's enough, please stop talking. You want to know why? Why? It's easy. The phone wave is upgraded to convert one second on the timer to real one second in real time. That's why the demon was successfully sent three hours into the past. Three hours is 180 minutes. I should have just set the timer to 180 seconds. 180 seconds is enough time to generate the electrical charge. Well, that's how it is. Here's who nods. Who upgraded it? Me, of course. Then may I ask, why didn't you make that upgrade in the other world lines? That's a hard question to answer, but maybe I didn't have enough money? The upgraded phone wave used a very expensive and rare component. Perhaps I wasn't able to get it in the other world lines and gave up. And how did you manage to procure that amount of money in this world line? I used remaining funds from the Magic Mod Project. Magic Mod Project? Wait a minute, you're telling me you don't know about that either? The Future Gadget- Oh! Future Gadget Magic Mod Project! You don't remember proposing that? Ah, come to think of it, Dara mentioned it when preparing for the D-mail. He said something like, Good thing we magic mod it. But he never clarified what he was talking about. I narrowed my eyes as I asked Kurosu. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ah, uh, I guess you really don't remember. I bet it's because of the reading Steiner. It seems that way. Then what about the Occupy Invention Contest? Remember that? Oh, I know what that is. I take the flyer from my pocket and unfold it for Kursu. Then you just save me a lengthy explanation. It's all in the flyer. That's not going to cut it. Can you give me the full rundown? Basically, you showed up with this flyer one day and said, We're going to enter this contest. I'm guessing you had yen signs in your eyes. Such a rudeness. An upstanding man like me would be more drawn to the recognition than the money. Well, either way, we decided to enter a bunch of junk we had lying around the lab. Don't call our inventions junk. Sure seemed to think they were at the time. He said, These are worthless as they are now. There's no way we'll win the grand prize. We have to modify them. That's when that's when the Future Gadget Magic Mod project began. Or so I hear. I wasn't there to witness that myself. Apparently the Magic Mod project started a month ago before I was even part of the lab. According to Kurosu, under my proposed Magic Mod project, the following improvements have been made to our gadgets. First of all, Future Gadget number 1, the Bit Particle Gun, was originally able to change channels on TV in sequential order. But apparently, with the additional button on top of the clip, it can now turn the TV on and off, too. Next, regarding Future Gadget number 2, the Bamboo Helicam. This problem child of a device is made up of a bamboo toy helicopter and a CCD camera attached to its fulcrum. However, the camera spins around as the copter does, viewing the footage can make the observer nauseous. 
Then came the implementation of a gyro sensor. With this, we prevented the camera from spinning, making stable, non-spinning videos possible. Future gadget number three, could this be Ora Ora? We included an additional function to measure the pH of a test subject's saliva. This gadget is a so-called lie detector, determining whether the test subject was lying or not based on the sweat of their thumb. But with this additional function, the credibility of this device improved, apparently succeeded in making this device look even more like a real lie detector. Future gadget number four, Mode Snake, received no particular upgrades. Apparently, because it looked dangerous, we determined that there was no way it would win the grand prize and excluded it from the project. The list continues. Future gadget number five, once again, I made something worthless by going on was a unique marriage between a hairdryer and a vacuum cleaner. We installed an air purifier into this device. By cleaning the exhausted air, the mod may into an eco-friendly gadget. Future gadget number six, I Loom Saber, had a fatal flaw where the fake blood inside would solidify after it had been lit up. Through the Magic Mod project, this defect had been resolved. The fake blood never solidifies, and the texture is even more realistic, apparently. Last, but perhaps most impressive, is future gadget number seven, Ghost in the Ball. What was once made up of 6-inch CRT TVs was now composed of super high-resolution sheet-type OEL displays. It uses 12 pentagonal displays and 20 hexagonal displays, making it a truncated icosahedron, much like a regular soccer ball. At each corner of each display is installed a high-performance widescreen CCD camera. The images captured by these cameras are displayed on the screen opposite. The only drawback, apparently, is its extremely long boot-up time. That would require an awful lot of funding especially if there was enough left over to upgrade the phone wave change. Could have given us that much money. That's... Before she could answer. Yeah! A slicing scream echoed through the air. It's my Eerie's voice, coming down from above us. When I look up, I see flickering inside the window. A gleaming red light could only be... A fire, Okabe, hurry! Rizu dashes up the staircase, and I follow close behind. Kurisu and I throw open the door to the lab, and are immediately pushed back by an intense wave of heat. What happened in here? I don't know. The room was filling with dark smoke. Visibility was poor. I could hardly see even a few meters in front of me. Larry! Daru! Where are you? I call out their names as loudly as I can. A response came quickly. The green over here! I crouched down and peeked below the smoke. The room is divided by a wall of fire. And beyond the blazing flames was Mayuri. She's trembling like a small animal. The flames are blocking her path over to me. Wait right there, I'll come get you! Okay! Where's Hashida? I I'm right here! Dari was standing right next to me. He's flustered, completely at a loss for what to do in this situation. I'm not going to ask him what happened just yet. Saving Mayuri comes first. Curse who called 119, hurry! I'm on it! Daru, go downstairs and evacuate the owner. Uh, okay. My lab coat was already off. Holding it in one hand, I run for the kitchen sink. I turn on the faucet and soak my coat in water. Okay! A weak voice from beyond the fire. I can hear my eerie calling me. But I didn't take the time to respond cover myself in the soaked lab coat, and without hesitation, I jump into the fire. When I busted through the wall of flames, right in front of me was Mayuri. Mayuri, are you okay? Yeah, what about you, Queen? Don't worry about me. There's such meager a magnitude cannot burn Hoween Kyoma. Your cheeks are singed. This is just suntan. As I spoke, I took off my lab coat and draped it over Mayuri's head. I wrap it around her front to cover her entire body. I look like a ghost on Halloween. Or perhaps a criminal being taken into custody by police. We don't have time for this ridiculous small talk. Come on, let's go, Mary! I pick Mary up and jump through the flames once more. I run down the stairs and come in front of the brown tube workshop. The fire has already drawn a crowd. Roaring at the front of it was the owner. He was swinging his massive arms around as if he was ready to beat the hell out of me any second. I was trying desperately to calm him down. He held onto the owner's upper body and planted his feet. Hey, Okabe, what the hell did you do? Look at this mess! For some reason, he's blaming me. Well, it's true that I am the CEO of the lab, so I guess it is my responsibility. Then, as if she could read my thoughts, Mayuri spoke. 
It's all Meishi's fault. Because Meishi dumped water in the tempera pot that was on fire. And the fire went boom and the pot flipped over and... And... I'm sorry, Okreen. I'm sorry, Kiss-chan. I'm so... I'm sorry. Wait, don't apologize yet. Before that, can you tell us why the oil and tempera pot started to burn? Were you not watching it closely? I was watching the recording of Mine Chan's show. Me, she was on the phone with Shinichi. Shinichi? Like I said, Shinichi san, the Woogie's older brother. The Woogie's brother is a cosplayer. He works at a pawn shop. It was stupid of me to ask. All this information is trivial. But the mystery was solved. We knew how the fire broke out. First of all, after pouring the tempera pot on the burner, Daru got swept away by Mine Chan's show. Meanwhile, Mayuri was busy on the phone with this Fubuki's brother person, so she too was ignoring the pot. Temperature of the oil in the ignored pot rose to its boiling point and started to vaporize. Then the flames from the gas stove reacted with the vapor turning into a giant column of flame. The frightened Mayuri instinctively threw water at it in hopes of putting the fire out. But that is the only forbidden action one must never take against an oil flame. The water instantly evaporates and the resulting explosion sprays burning oil in all directions. From a distance, I can hear the siren of a fire truck. I stand there, vacantly looking up at the lab. The fire shows no signs of waning. In fact, it keeps growing harsher and harsher. All those gadgets we magic modded, down the drain. Ursu mutters. I mean, at this point, I'm not too worried about those. I'm sorry about all the treasures we've collected. I suddenly realized that Daru was standing next to us. The owner had run into the workshop to grab what looked like important documents and ran away somewhere. What treasures? Urzu inquires. Daru, looking at the second floor window, absentmindedly responded. You're talking about the skeb. Skeb? Sketchbook. It was packed full of drawings by Omi-san. Itonori-san, Inomotsu-san, Imichiki-san, Kanihiro-san, Nanaru-san, Inomitsu-san, Oriyuki-san, Fukutomo-san, and Huke-san. That's not all. There were other illustrations from famous artists in there. But in this fire, it's toast. I bet it's all burned away. Who knows? You're the one that caused all this. I wanted to scream. I managed to choke back my words. Holding Daru is pointless. Either way, what's done can't be undone. What's done can't be undone. What's done can't be undone? Right. That's right! What am I doing waiting around here? This way, the phone wave names will change, and the completed time leap machine will be burned to ash. Since we can't guarantee that my area won't be kidnapped, it would be really bad if I couldn't send d or time leap anymore. And furthermore, this lab houses a countless number of our precious memories. I won't let some temporal oil destroy our holy sanctuary, our grand future gadget laboratory. My feet had started moving before I could think. I confidently ascend the steps of the staircase. Wait, Okabe, what are you doing? What am I doing? Foolish question. There's only one thing left to do. Extinguish the fire. I open the door and enter the lab once again. I put a nearby lab coat over my head and jump into the fire. I leap through the wall of flame and tumble into the development room. Luckily the fire hasn't yet reached this area. The phone wave name sort of change is safe. Now to deal with the fire. I will put it out! I shall extinguish it! I had two options. Leap through time or send a D-mail. There's risk involved with the former. The time leap machine is defective, Kurisu told me in that previous world line. Come to think of it, maybe the time leap machine's malfunctions were caused by the magic mods. Maybe when the improvements to the phone wave names of the change were made, copy and pasting of memory data had stopped working properly. At any rate, there is no room for error. You must choose the option with guaranteed success. And that's D-mail. I will send a D-mail. The recipient will be my cell phone. The time will be 322. It was 3.20 when the Keep My Area In message arrived, so I decided to send this one immediately after. Just because it's possible the Keep My Area In message could be deleted if I send the new one earlier. I'll have to experiment with the idea of erasing d-mails like that, but for now, 
and decided that I'm better safe than sorry. The message looks the message looks like this. Stop summit. Use no fire. Lab will burn. After I've typed it up, I proceed to set the timer to 240 seconds and activate. It's currently 7:22, so in order to send an email to 3:22, the timer should read 240 seconds. Electricity had already begun to discharge. I'd selected the recipient. All I needed to do was to press send. I raised my right arm and shouted. Tremble, right arm of mine! I call upon our contract to issue my command! Quell this frenzied flame of crimson! Then, I pressed the button. Oh boy! 4.530805 the world trembles. My vision wavers. My heart felt as though an evil dwarf was running around inside it, breaking things. It's okay. It's just the usual dizziness. It will soon subside. After waiting for things to settle down, I slowly surveyed my surroundings. A stranger stands in front of me. Who is he? I did not recognize the man at all, but he stands and stares at me. It's creepy. He doesn't seem like someone I should get involved with. I casually try to make my way out of his line of sight. Once more, I take in my surroundings. Coin lockers, in front of Daibiru. As usual, I didn't understand what I was doing there. But there's no question that my reading Steiner is activated. The world line has changed. Suddenly, the something about the stacked coin lockers caught my eye. The door to the locker in the bottom left corner is severely deformed. My curiosity draws me near. I squat down and take a peek inside. Empty. There was nothing inside. So, what? The locker is of no concern. More importantly, the lab! I have to check on the lab! I took off running in its direction. Hey, wait! It may have been the man from earlier, but by the time his voice reached my back, I didn't care. I keep running without turning back. 7.31 PM, I arrive in front of the brown tube workshop. I put my hands on my knees, gather my breath, and look up above me. It's out. Fire. It's extinguished. There was no crackling red light behind the window. There were no crowds, and Mr. Brown was just watching some variety TV show on his 42-inch CRT television as if nothing happened. Ugh. I take a deep breath with my hand on my chest. I wipe the sweat off my forehead and climb the steps to the lab. I am back. Before I could say, k something strange robbed me of speech. An unexpected sight rushed up to greet me as I opened the door. What? What is this? Bright red blood is splattered around the room. The blood was not yet dry, still glossy and wet. Calm down. Calm down. Think! What the hell could have happened? I sent a D-mail in the previous world line and moved over to this world line. My D-mail likely cancelled the development summit, but that would have erased the lab fire. But in its place... In its place... I look at my watch. It's 7.34. Don't tell me... The rounders raided us! No, that can't be! That's not possible! That's not... That was a different world line. What do I make of all this blood? Whose is it? Come to think of it, where are the lab mems? There wasn't a trace of anyone in the room. No Mayuri, no, no Kurusu, no Daru? I ran over to the development room, but it was empty too. They weren't here. There was no blood in the development room. There was something I didn't recognize single piece of paper on the table. I take and look at it. It was a memo. Promissory contract. Karone Shinpan Ko, LTD. Here and after, Party A. And Rintaro Okope, here and after, Party B. Hereby enter a monetary expenditure loan contract in agreement of the following terms. 
Section 1. Effective today, A offers a loan of 3 million yen to B, which B accepts. Section 2. B shall repay A the 3 million yen loan mentioned in the previous section by August 11, 2011, either in person or via bank transfer. Section 3. Interest shall be 0% until September 11, 2010. Any repayments remaining after this day shall occur interest, incur interest in the rate of 10% per 10 days. Oh, that's brutal. August 12, 2010. Further down on the debtor Party B line, there was a signature in initials. The signature reads Okabe Rintero in what was unmistakably my own handwriting. Madness! Three million? I don't remember borrowing such a ridiculous sum. Scoffing at the absurd promissory contract, I rip it up and toss the pieces into the trash. And then I noticed. Up until now, I hadn't taken a look at myself and noticed the anomaly. Blood. It's blood! My hands are covered with blood. It's not just my hands. Examining myself further, I found blackish red blood stains all over my clothes. The hell? What happened? My hand trembles as I take out my phone. I needed to know where the lab ems were. Force my shaking fingers to call my area. Silence. Not so much as a ring. And a moment later, a robotic voice gives me a message. The number you have dialed is unavailable. Please leave your name and message after the beep. It's me, Mayuri! Call me as soon as you get this! I then proceed to call Kirisu, then Daru, only to get the same result. No ring, just the robotic message. Damn it, what's going on? In my rage, I kicked a nearby shelf. Their phones don't ring, that means they must be off. Or they have no signal. Or they're already... Shaking the terrible thoughts out of my head, I catch a glimpse under the table. There sat the phone wave, named to change. Timely machine. I'm leaping. It took me no time to decide. I don't believe a mere D-mail will solve anything at this point. Even if I managed to avert one tragedy using a D-mail, there's no guarantee that I'd be able to do so a second or third time. My experiences in other world lines have been proof of that. So I'm leaping. I'll perform a time leap. I'll solve this problem by getting to the root of what happened in this lab. Can't see any other way to make things right. Kurzu said the time leap machine was defective, but I only failed to transmit my memory data once. It might not happen this time. It's worth a shot. In order to prevent this worst-case scenario, I'm asleep at any cost. I activate the X68000 and adjust the settings. The magic mod improvements should have been applied to the time leap functionality as well, so... Pound 120. 120 minutes. I'll leap back two hours. I thought one hour would be too recent, and three hours would be too far back. So I chose the time in between. I put on the headgear. The fear of losing my memory again crept into my thoughts, but I shut my eyes tightly and pushed it away. I've already decided. There's no turning back. Preparations are complete. All I need to do now is to activate the device. I raised my right hand and roared. Come forth, Zorvan! Our pact compels you! Bring me through the gate of time and into the past! Noise pierces my eardrums. I feel like a piece of shattered glass is being driven into every wrinkle of my brain. My vision undulates wildly for a moment, then gradually stabilizes. My dizziness thankfully taking the pain in my head with it. The lab. I didn't need to look around to figure out where I was. The usual scenery was right before my eyes. In my right hand was a cell phone. My left hand was empty. Fine. Empty is fine. Both of my hands were clean, and there were no bloodstains on my clothes. I looked at my watch. 5.41. Did the time leap work? What about my memory? The fact that the question surfaced at all was a sign that I succeeded. I remember everything before the time leap. 
He could recall everything in vivid detail, even the shape of the splatters of blood all over the room. But now, that blood is nowhere to be seen. The wall, the floor, the sketchbook on the table. Hey, hey, Okreem, what are you doing? I heard a voice behind me. I turn around to see Mayuri standing there with a puzzled look on her face. Mayuri. I'm struck by the sudden urge to embrace her. I just barely managed to hold myself back. Though I'd assumed her safety from the lack of blood in the room, seeing her as confirmation, the tension in my heart slowly began to relax. I sigh lightly, so Mayuri doesn't suspect a thing. I could ask you that, Mayuri. What brings you here? What do you mean? I've been here with you all, all along. What a weird question. I held back from mentioning anything about my reading Santa or making a time leap. You probably wouldn't understand even if I tried to explain. I hit my head earlier, so I can't remember anything that happened in the past few hours. Then my Mayuri said, Are you okay? You should probably see a doctor. Oh no, don't worry, Mayuri. It's not that bad. If you merely refresh my memory, I'm sure I'll remember. So, what's the story? Let's see. You were looking at the costume I finished, imagining a cocoon wearing it, and laughing like this. Wait, you mean to tell me you went to Rukako's place? Nope, I didn't go. Because you told me you are under no circumstances to leave this place, Okreen. What about my assistant and Daru? They don't seem to be in the lab. Nope, they're not. They haven't come back just yet. Well, actually, they might not even come back until tomorrow. Okreen told me over the phone that he was going to see a movie in Ginza. You know they're showing Code Geass in theaters right now, right? So he's going to see the 6 o'clock showing. Ah, Code Geass reference. As for Christian, um, I'm not sure, but I don't think she's coming back. Why? Because she was upset. Why was that? Because Okreen suddenly said, The development summit is cancelled. Christian and Darkon were both out shopping for it, but he suddenly called them and said it was cancelled. Aha. Huh. Now I get it. In order to confirm this, I pulled my cell phone out and checked the, the mail inbox. Keep my eerie. In to stop. Kidnapping. Stop summit. Use no fire. Lab will burn. I sent the three D-mails at the bottom, or more accurately, the one D-mail split into three parts from my eerie's phone in the first world line. At the top are the ones I sent in the subsequent world line in order to prevent the fire. Having received these D-mails around 320, I seem to have followed their instructions to a T. First, I stopped Mayuri from going out and confined her to the lab, then I called Kurusu and Daru to declare that the summit was cancelled. It's no surprise that that would upset them, though. Now that I think of it, was Mayuri aware of her kidnapping? Did my past self tell Mayuri, don't go anywhere or you'll be kidnapped? Using my demeanor, that doesn't seem to be the case. A relaxed, carefree smile doesn't show even a trace of urgency. That's the way she always is. Her smile is hardly evidence. Oh, green! You want some Mitarashi Dango? In a blink, Mayuri had a pack of Mitarashi Dango skewers in her hands. One of the three packs commonly sold in convenience stores. Mayuri had already grabbed one of the three skewers. Two left. To eat, or not to eat? To eat. As I reached out to grab one, suddenly an image resurfaced from the back of my mind. Brought back by the sticky glossiness of the Mitarashi Dango. Blood. Fresh blood all over the lab's floor and walls. Whose blood was that? But my ear he said is true, then Kurusu and Daru will not come back to the lab today. Then it could only be one person. My ear, put the Mitsurashi Dango down right now! What? Well, I've already started eating it! No, not the one that you're working on! Put the other two down on the table! Why? Because we're heading out! What? Just because! If we stay here, there's a risk we'll be attacked by someone. No. Not a risk. Certainty. But you said you are under no cir- You are uh, You are too under no circumstances to leave this place, Okreen. Twice. Twice? Yep. First when you got a message on your phone, and second when Mayushi got a message. You said it when I showed you this one. Mayushi said as she faced her cell phone screen toward me. No going out. Lab is safe. Fight. 
bulkheads? Like on a ship? Like a bulkhead? She received at 326. Four minutes after I received the stop summit message. This email was sent to my cell phone at that time. Yes, this email composed of three messages of 12 one-bit characters each. It was clear they had been sent from the future of a different world line. What is a BLK BLKHD? Blackhead. Blackhead, maybe? I was gonna go with bulkheads. No, that seems both unnatural and unnecessary. Why would staying in the lab help protect us against bad skin? And fight? I envisioned myself putting a massive, poorly washed nose into a grapevine stretch. It was so surreal that I made my eye twitched. The message alone is enough to baffle, but there was another peculiar thing about it. The sender. Ferris Chan. Ferris Chan is how my area addresses Ferris. Why? Why is the kitty girl sending D mail? Mystery. 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 All this nonsense was enough to make my brain shred out in a shower of sparks. There was another element that confused me. Two sentences written in the D mail. No going out. Lab is safe. They threw me. There's no question that we'll be attacked by some enemy if we stay here. The email that Ferris sent says that the lab is safe. And the strong wording of the no going out message only hammers it home. What do I do? What do I do? My thoughts were interrupted. By a high pitched electronic sound blaring from Mayuri's phone. A red message window pops up on the screen. No remaining battery life. Shutting off. A few seconds later. Mayuri's cell phone went black. Oh, the battery died. By the way, Okreen, can I eat another Mitarashi Dango? Mary asked, her mouth covered with tari sauce. I sighed my response. Do whatever you want. We still have time. The blood in the lab didn't look to have been there for very long. Whatever tragedy occurred likely happened only 15 minutes before I entered the lab, maybe 30. Even if I thought the attack was an hour before I arrived, we'd still have 40 minutes or so left. With that in mind, I decided that my internal time limit is half of that, 20 minutes. I need to decide our course of action within that time. Do we stay here, or do I run away somewhere with my Eerie? We'll stay here until our 20 minutes is up. However, given my uncertainty, I decided to check on the phone wave news of the change slash timely machine, just in case. I pointed myself in the direction of the development room and a certain piece of paper caught my eye. The promissory contract. The document that I had just ripped to shreds sat untorn on the desk. It's not a surprise. Of course it's been reconstructed. I did time leap after all. Once again, I pick up this obnoxious document and stare it down. Effective today, A offers a loan of 3 million yen to B, which B accepts. It's dated August 12th of this year. In other words, yesterday. Apparently, I borrowed 3 million yen from the Karone Shinpan company. But why? What are you looking at, Okreen? An unexpected voice met my ears. When I look up, my Eri's innocent face was directly in front of mine. She chews away at a mouthful of Mitarashi Dango. From the looks of things, she's probably not aware of the contract. I casually return to its original place, place my hand on my Eri's shoulder, and lead her back to the common room. I ask her just to make sure. Mary, what do you think of when I say 3 million yen? For a second, Mary's eyes moved as if she were thinking something over. She stopped chewing. Um, you mean the prize me she won at the lottery? Lottery? These lab shared funds and borrow without telling anyone else. I'm like a reliable housewife, aren't I? Huh? Okay, did you say I don't remember anything that happened in the past few hours? I the lottery about a month ago. You don't remember that either? Oh, she's always been pretty sharp. Fortunately, I have a go-to method for situations like this. I held my head in my hands and started screaming. Oh! My head! My head is about to explode! What's going on, O'Green? The organization's Recollect Project Annihilate, aka R2A, which they implanted in my brain has been activated. Probably why I can't remember anything about the lottery. No, are you okay? Whether I'll be okay or not is in your hands. Huh? What do you mean? 
By regaining my lost memories, I can send out a reverse brainwave pulse of the R2A, destroying it in the process. Now tell me, Mayuri, what happened to the three million that you pulled from the lottery? Mayuri balls her hands into tight fist, furrowed her brow, and spoke. Um, I used it. For what? The Future Gadget Magic Mod Project. You mean you used it to fund the gadget upgrades? Well, like I said earlier, I spent lab's money for the lottery. That's why we all discussed it and decided to use my benefit the lab. If we could win the grand prize of the invention contest, we'd be able to make three million yen back, right? That's why we decided to invest in a brighter future for the Future Gadget Laboratory. Oh, well, the last part was your words. Maya responded. Swing the half-eaten stick of Matarashi Dango, Mitarashi Dango, around with a stern look on her face. By the way, have we entered the contest yet? Nope, the deadline is August 31st, so you said we do as many upgrades as possible. Neil Green, are you really okay? My ear looks at my face with concern. I put my finger against my temple, shake my head lightly, then speak. Now I am. We succeeded in destroying the R2A. Oh, that's good. My ear sighs deeply and looks at me with twinkling eyes. Then, seemingly remembering the Mitarashi Dango in her hand, she takes another bite. Nom. That's one mystery solved. We now know where the funding for the Magic Mod project came from. That was not the answer I was looking for. The contract is still shrouded in mystery. Why would I borrow 3 million yen? I didn't even have enough evidence to base any theories on. This wasn't used to fund the Magic Mod project, then. Could it be... For the ransom? The idea blinked into my head. Maybe the kidnapper demanded three million yen in exchange for their hostage's life. Maybe that's why I needed to borrow the money. The price is fairly low by typical ransom standards, but if I were the target, it would make sense. There's no way a mere student like me could come up with hundreds of billions of yen. However, the kidnapping occurred only in the first world line. But my area of this world line has neither gone missing nor become anyone's hostage. Hmm. Wait. Hostage. And I think that that is a pretty good place to cut it. I am so curious as to where this is going. This is, this has gone really weird. Like, all the other ones felt pretty short. Like, okay, well, we're following, you know, sort of one plot line. This feels like four, five, I don't know, multiple plot lines all going at the same time. Which is fascinating. I'm, I'm so excited to see where this goes. And I hope you are too. So thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steinsgate Linear Bounded Phenogram, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now!